Hello, and welcome to Insights with Dr. C. I'm your host, Dr. Douglas Carpenter. I'm a clinical psychologist who's been in practice for more than 20 years. My wife, Mary Carpenter, licensed master social worker, and I are the owners of Insight Counseling Services in Rochester, Michigan. Welcome to today's show. The topic of today's show is building a financial self, the childhood years. And with me today is Rhonda Williams. Hi, Rhonda. Rhonda's been a guest on our show a few times now, and Rhonda is a certified financial planner and a certified divorce financial analyst from Ameriprise Financial Advisors in Rochester, Michigan. And Rhonda is just a wealth of information um, in so many ways and in so many areas. And so she and I have talked about many topics that we could discuss on the show, and, and one of those is we thought it would be important to talk about money, money scripts, the way children learn about money, um, the attitudes we as parents maybe impart to our children about money. So Rhonda, Mm -hmm. let's talk about that for a little bit. What are are your thoughts about that? Well, you know, I think that um, the way we think about money starts when we're really young and, uh, you know, we're in our home and we absorb so many messages from our parents indirectly and directly that influence the way that we shape our belief system as mm-hmm. we get older. And one of those things that parents help to shape for us and, and how we see our world and how money plays into that is, um, is our relationship with money and how we interact around money and whether or not, you know, our family has harmonious interaction about money or whether there's always conflict. You know, a, a, a lot of kids, if you ask them, what do you think your family needs? Mm. Well, they would say, we need more money. more money, more money, right? Because they hear family talking about how they don't have money for this or for that. And, um, can't go to Disneyland without can't more go money. To Disneyland without <laughs> more money. So, you know, what I think what they're probably really trying to say is that they wish that there were less conflict about money mm. and there was maybe more peace in their home. Uh, not so much that they believe that their family needs a lot more money. They mm. want peace in the home. Yeah. What are some ways that you think parents um, unknowingly pass on their attitudes about money to their children? I mean, that, that yeah. can be such an unconscious process. How do you think kids absorb that? How do, how do parents pass that on? Well, I think it's pretty simple. If they, if they see healthy attitudes about money, they will probably grow up to have, you know, a healthy attitude themselves and make Mm -hmm. wise decisions. And, and maybe that's the bulk of people, but the opposite is true as well. Um, uh, a a book that I read recently, uh, called Crazy About Money, Maggie Smith, uh, describes how when she was growing up, and she's a behavioral finance uh, specialist, and and she describes that when she was little, and she would find uh, coins in the sofa, mm. she would uh, give them to her dad and say, "Dad, these are probably this is probably your money. Um, you know, I want to give you your money back." And he would say, "Well, you found it, so let's play a game." And he would toss the coin in the air, and if she could catch it, he would let her keep it. But if she didn't catch it and it rolled off, she'd scurry and bring it back to dad and she would lose that coin. And so she was learning things about money from her dad and playing that game is that dad has money. He may have lots of it and that it's fun to talk about money with dad. But the same is true that as she grew older and she became more aware of the dynamic in the home, she would hear her father, you know, saying to her mom, you know, why did you spend so much money on that for the Mm. child? Or, you know, Mm. he would explode if, if mom needed grocery money. And so she learned that, you know, if she were to ask for things uh, that would take money in the house that might cause tension mm. in the home. And so she, she started to avoid that. And so her learning in her family was that, you know, dad may have money and, and he is in control of that and I may not have access to it. And so right. she built her own script around money. And so Maggie did this great study um, on how children learn various scripts mm-hmm. as they're growing up about money and how that can influence them. As they get older. It's interesting. What I heard as a psychologist in mm-hmm. your story I there know. was that she overheard dad possibly say, why did you spend that so much on this on child? Her. Yes. On her. And so what mm-hmm. does that do to the self-esteem and self-value of the child? Right. Oh, I'm costing my family money or I'm a burden Right. Well, in, in Maggie's case, what she ended up saying is that she felt like money is scarce and I may never have enough of it. Mm. 
because people don't people don't find pleasure in providing for me. My father doesn't doesn't enjoy. Mm. There's no joy in in giving to his family. That it's a burden, and, and he would complain about it. Mm-hmm. And so she picked up on all these cues. Maybe not directly, but all of those are very kind of. Except the story, where, you know, she's playing a game with her father. Right. But everything else is an indirect message that she absorbed in her home that shaped how she saw money. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, Maggie came up with several different, um, several different stories about money and children and how they, uh, you know, and how they absorb these ideas. Mm-hmm. And then it shapes how they view money down the road. It was interesting as you were talking, mm-hmm. uh, a memory flashback be- yeah. before me of um, earlier in my career when uh, my wife and I were transitioning jobs. And we had two children. It was close to Christmas time, and we were very low on funds. Uh, and I thought, how am I going to communicate this to my children? Yeah, so one right. thing I did, and you can tell me if I, I did the right thing no. here. <laughs> <laughs> I went and got a stack of Monopoly money. Yeah. And I went with them in their bedroom and got toys to represent the different bills uh-huh. that, we, that we had. Yes. And so I, you know, I said... I got a character. Here's mom. Here's me. Here's you. Here's your brother. Um, here's something to represent the electric <clears throat> company. Here's something to represent the water company. And yeah. so I had this stack of Monopoly money. And so I said, okay, this bill requires $500. So I yeah. put that there. And so then at the end, I just had a couple of dollars left. And I said, and it's Christmas time. What are we going to do? <laughs> and so we all decided that we're just going to get one or two gifts right. this year, and they're going to be within this value because yeah. that's what the dollars that we have. Well, you framed for them, right, the value of money. Right. And instead of being, oh, poor us, that we can't have presents or, you know, it's too bad, I can't give this to you, instead of framing it that way, you framed it more as a positive for the kids. It's about the experience and the love and being with you on that day. Right. Then And that... That gives them a money mm-hmm. script. And, and I also tried to say mm-hmm. in that scenario that aren't you thankful that we have this money that we can pay our bills yeah. so we can live in our house uh-huh. and Christmas is kind of an added bonus. So yeah. I tried to show them the value. Right. Of what money does. Even though as a parent, I was feeling terrible. You were feeling bad. <laughs> right. <laughs> about the condition that we were in and the, yeah. the strain uh-huh. of finances. And, yeah. And, you know, my wife and I did that together, so we tried to present a united front. But it had an impact on you, right, that you remember this now. Absolutely. And I thought it was an important lesson to to teach your kids that, Mm -hmm. above all, you pay your bills first. Yeah, right. And then whatever's left is you have to do whatever to do else what you, you need want. to do. Right, yeah. Well, and then the, it gives them a different appreciation. So those are all money scripts that, that we pick up when we're young. And what we would hope is that children would get financial confidence money scripts, right? So that's a financial confidence script. Mm-hmm. You're saying, don't worry, your needs will be cared for. Mm-hmm. And they are cared for. And we have abundance. And we want to share that with you right. out of our abundance. And so one of the scripts that you know Maggie gives is about you know a young girl. Um, I think in this case, her name is Sean. Okay. And so Sean's family is kind of, this is a similar situation where um, you know her parents give her an allowance. But she has to do chores to get mm-hmm. her allowance. And so she's learning to be somewhat independent in what she's able to acquire with the money that she earns. But at the same time, she she really senses that her parents are happy to give her good things when they're able to. Right. And she doesn't she doesn't feel that she has to ask for a lot because her parents will sense her needs and be able to help her get what she needs to get and mm-hmm. that that will always be covered by them. And so Sean grows up with a pretty healthy sense of what money does. The money provides for our needs and then when we're able to share with others, we share out of our abundance. Mm-hmm. And that will script her future as she sees money. But of course, you know, Sean has friends. And so Sean has a friend, Julia, whose parents give her $20 a week and Julia doesn't have to do anything to get it. Mm. So, and she makes fun of her friends who have to earn money to get their allowance, who do chores to earn their money. (laughs) And Julia's parents, you know, grew up in, in poverty, but now they're successful. 
and they give their child nice things and nice clothes, but it's more because it makes them feel more successful right. to see their child getting nice things. And then Julia, when she's at school, gets a lot of attention from mm. her peer group and from other adults because she has a lot of nice things. It's so important for parents to remember that your own upbringing mm -hmm. plays such a part in how you're going to respond to your own children. Right. Just like this story with mm -hmm. Julia where her parents didn't grow up with plenty. Mm -hmm. So now they have a tendency to overindulge their own children. Because they're not aware of their own money script. Right. For the they're things not they conscious. didn't have. Right. And because they're not conscious of that, they're feeding a different script to their daughter, Julia, who now sees that money is power, that right. she can get attention and her parents get attention because they have things. Mm -hmm. And so what will that mean for her as an adult when she sees right. money as power? And then what if she doesn't have money as an adult? Right. And then she could end up feeling powerless and this unhealthy attitude. It's interesting that in, in my own home, I'll, mm -hmm. I'll just use it as an example, yeah. um, a couple of different things here. My wife and I come from very different backgrounds, and well, we yeah. have very different scripts about mm -hmm. money. Oh, my house too. <laughs> so that creates for a very interesting dynamic mm -hmm. sometimes with our children because I will go somewhere with our children and I tend to give in more to their wants. Mm -hmm. And my wife is much more of the money script where you really need to earn things. Mm -hmm. And so we came in with very yeah. different scripts and, and we've had to learn to juggle our, our own financial identities yeah. in the, the scripts that we're trying to pass on to our children. Right. And within that, so it's important that, you know, and we're kind of getting into that as parents, it's important that we know what our money script is. Right. So that we can together avoid conflict and help our children build these healthy mindsets about money. Then maybe they'll see the balance of the two of you and right. realize that on the one hand, you need to earn money to be able to enjoy it, you know, to have the things that you want. But then there is grace and love and that out of our right. abundance, we, we will share that with you and we'll be happy to share that with you. Right. And so, the, I mean, there could, both of those things could be healthy, but probably in the extreme, right? Oh, yeah. In the extreme, not so much. And not so much. You know, it's interesting yeah. the way I think my wife and I have tried to work to balance and manage yeah. our coming into this relationship with very different money scripts is we have made it very clear to our children that we will supply your needs. Mom mm -hmm. and dad will take care of that. Yeah. But when it comes to your wants... Yeah. Mom and dad will do that within reason. Right. But really, we expect you to work toward the things that you want. Maybe ask, is there something I can do to earn money toward what it is that I want? Yeah. When you get gift cards for Christmas or your birthdays, those are for purchasing things that you want, not yeah. things that you need. Again, mom and dad are going to take care of that. You know, also one thing my wife and I try to do is when we see our kids doing something spontaneous without having to be told and they're putting some extra effort into that, we might financially reward them yeah. for that and say, okay, I'm going to give you $5 for the wonderful thing that you did here and you can put that toward your money pot for something that you want. Well, and that's an important point. In fact, um, George Fallant was a... a psychiatrist at Harvard Medical Center. Mm -hmm. And going back way to the 1960s, he started uh, a research where they, they gathered data on boys and what their activities were during their childhood. And uh, they kept track of things like, did the boy have cho chores in the home? Did he okay. get paid for them? What did he do in the community? Was he a boy scout? You know, what did he do extracurricular in high school? And, and what were his grades in high school relative to his IQ? Meaning that they were really looking for what kind of effort was he industrious? Okay. Was this child industrious and taught to work during their childhood, during their boyhood? And then they came back to these young men when they were 25 and 35 and 47. So they tracked them into their men. A long men, time, a longitudinal long time. study. This is one of the longest studies on uh, <laughs> childhood behavior and impact in later life. And, okay. And what they found through this study, you know, there were 60 boys who participated. Wow. So 
a good, a a good, good amount. amount. A good amount. And they found that those boys who were industrious, they worked, and they were expected to work during their childhood and their young adulthood, were far less likely to end up in jail. The boys who were not industrious had a six times higher oh, death wow. rate than young men who were expected. <clears throat> the, the, the stuff was expected of them when right. they were younger. And so this study has been used to prove many times that how we develop this money script, and especially when it comes to being industrious, when when boys or girls are younger, mm -hmm. expecting them to do chores, expecting them to earn their own money, and that that does build into their self esteem and their and their happiness, mm -hmm. where they feel that they have some control. Now, my own money script, I felt that too. That you know, having jobs younger and then in high school, especially, you know, a desire to be independent and and have a job mm -hmm. where I could I could choose to spend that money how I wanted to, and I didn't have to ask for money because there was that conflict in my home too. Okay. And in asking for something, I was bothering people, or I was I was mm -hmm. a burden to ask for things. But if I could pay for my own prom dress, or if I could take care of these things, it built a lot of self esteem and desire to succeed because I felt confident that I could do it. So these money scripts are important uh, because as we get older, how we view money as either healthy or we see it as power or another example, um, you know, if, if, we're, if we're anxious about money. So, you know, moms and dads often have the discussion about, should we get a hamster or are we going to okay. get a cat? And, you know, mom will sit down and say, okay, I want you to add up all the expenses of having this pet. What's it going to cost? What's it going to cost? <clears throat> and then that's a good practical exercise to do with the child. But then, you know, a lot of times the mom may come back and say $40 and that's just up front. You know, right. we're going to have to, it's going to damage things and it's, you know, it's setting this negative tone on what the child wants, mainly because mom may not want to pick up after it and she right. knows she's going to end up taking care of the thing but if we're not clear with our children and direct with our children that sets up a, a money script of anxiety mm -hmm. with the child of saying you know what i was asking for is too much mom was saying you know and then what if your your siblings want a hamster now it's not 40 now it's 120 dollars for three mm. hamsters that are probably going to mm -hmm. kill each other right, right. <laughs> And I'll have to be the one to deal with it. And so, um, you know, we, we have to be really careful in how we we talk with children about money and that we give them a healthy perspective that, you know, money is something that is a tool to be used to provide for ourselves and to acquire right. nice things when we work for it. But at the same time, we don't have to take on fear right. about money and yeah, anxiety about money. I think some parents can money. really give some negative scripts. Mm -hmm about money right. to their children. Yeah. What if a parent has done that? Let's yeah. say they've given some negative scripts to these kids. What could they do to maybe go about reversing that script for their kid and teaching them a, a different script about money? Well, the kids are adaptable, right? <clears throat> and they're moldable. Yes. And so even if a child has taken on perhaps a negative attitude or a negative belief about money and you can identify you know, start with yourself and say, what are my money scripts and, and what do I communicate to my children about money and about work that, you know, work can be a pleasurable thing. It, it's, you know, if you're always complaining about your work, then the child is going to get the idea that work is a burden when work can be a good thing in your life and right. identifying what you're saying in the home that could contribute to a negative money script right. and then communicate with your child. Start to talk with them when they see things. Um, you know, I had an example one time of a, a girl who went to a birthday party. This is a friend of mine, her daughter, and she had bought a $10 gift card mm. for the girl to take to the birthday party. But uh, a boy reached over and saw, you know, oh, $10 gift $10. card and said, your mom is cheap. cheap. Oh. Your mom is cheap, oh, right? No. And so, you know, now the boy has made a big deal and the, the daughter didn't know that, you know, this, this could be a comparison and a judgmental right, kind of thing. Right, right. And so sometimes those thoughts and feelings don't get communicated right. with children. And then those beliefs go underground mm -hmm. and become unconscious mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and can build into a bigger habit. So I think communicating with your children about what they hear about money and, and letting them know that you can tell me that somebody didn't like the gift. Right. And, and maybe mm -hmm. I need to be aware of that. Maybe 
maybe ten dollars wasn't was enough, it? wasn't right. good, and and confess to the child that you might have made a mistake, or maybe not, or maybe that mm -hmm. that that's standard. That's what our mm -hmm. family will be doing, and um, and let them feel confident about yeah. that. I know, looking at my myself and my mm -hmm. own potential negative script that I yeah. may have passed on to my kids, is my father ten, tended to be pretty frugal. Yeah. Even though we had plenty, uh -huh. he was frugal. Yeah. Um, and we might be related. <laughs> <laughs> so sometimes when my wife and I are, are trying to decide, should we spend the money on this item, this thing that we're looking at buying, I will often say, well, you might as well, you can't take it with you. Yeah. You know, in some ways that's a negative well, script to my kids because I don't want to give them the, the impression that, well, just because you want something, you should buy it because you can't take your money with you, you know, which is but somewhat could, some yeah. my attitude. It depends on how that's framed, right. because that could be a positive. Because on the on the flip side, I, as a financial advisor, see people who think that they're going to drag a U-Haul to heaven, and so they're storing everything up in the U-Haul, but they're not they're not spreading their abundance. That reminds mm -hmm. me of a hilarious joke that I heard recently that a man his last request was to be buried with his money. Oh, and so. His wife said I, that she would grant his wish. Yeah. And so at the funeral, she announced that she granted his wish, and everybody <gasps> gasped yeah. because he had all this money. And she said, it's fine. I wrote him a check. I wrote a check. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She's pretty smart. Right. She should right. be my client. <laughs> So anyway, even though that's we're having fun, yeah. it's a serious topic it is. that you've got yes. to think about the information mm -hmm. that you're imparting to your children. Directly or indirectly. Right, mm -hmm. directly or indirectly. Um, another area that you mentioned when it came to that study was industriousness. Yeah. How do you teach your children to be more industrious? Well, I think in, in making work fun, I think that a lot of times we give kids chores, chores. and it sounds dreadful, and, and they get this negative mindset that, um, you know, work is hard and it doesn't bring pleasure. But, you know, giving them a positive attitude that when they're out there shoveling, you go shovel with, with them, them. And you make it fun and you laugh and you, you help them understand that work is not all a drag. Mm -hmm. Right. And I think that's a great point that you, that we as a family do things together. Yeah. Right. You know. And you set that tone as a parent and that indirectly, subconsciously, children are absorbing all of this information that we give them and they're building their life story on it. And perhaps we're not aware of it. A flippant comment, well, mm -hmm. you can't take it with you, that they may plant a seed with them that may impact their ability to make good money decisions mm -hmm. down the road. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, th I think it's important to teach them industriousness. Like, it is. for example, whenever our subdivision has their subdivision garage sale, mm -hmm. my kids have always said, I want to have a lemonade stand. Right. I want to, you know, yes. and I've encouraged that. Teach them how to be I've an entrepreneur. Taking them to Sam's mm -hmm. and say, okay, what drinks do you want to pick out to sell? Yeah. You know, and even though I may realize they may only sell five or six things and we had to buy a pack of 12. Yeah. It's still the process yeah. of them learning um, of how to be industrious right. uh, or industrious and how, how to sell something, how to collect the money for it. Well, it's the whole what process gonna... of setting a goal right. and then uh, building a path to that goal. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and then what are you going to do with the money that you earned? How are, yeah. how are you going to choose to manage that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how can, how can adults who have a negative money script. Yeah. At this point in adulthood, work on changing their negative script. Well, that's a lot more complex because right. some of these things have become entrenched in how they see the world and how they see their money. And by now, some of these money scripts, when we talk about divorce planning, this is part of the issue mm. that brings people to destroying relationships and, and inability to to help their children in a way that you know builds for them a, a healthy future and how they see the world, money and work. So it's a lot more difficult. And I think that you know, with adults, it, it involves more with a therapist right. who can help them identify how they see money and how it could be destructive and um, help them make some of those changes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mm -hmm. think you're absolutely right. I think it's so important for um, people to come in to therapy and be willing to examine their past. Mm -hmm. 
Um, you know, so many people come into therapy with a certain problem and they say, I, you know, don't be the typical psychologist with me. Don't, I don't want to dig around in my past. So I want to solve this issue. Yeah. Well, okay, that's great. I'm glad you want to solve mm -hmm. this issue, but you have to understand that your thinking about this issue is more than likely based on something, an experience that you've right. been through mm -hmm. in your past. There is something um, that has provided the foundation for that thought. It's organic. It's yes. organic, and mm -hmm. you have to then go back and look at that. Where did this thought come from? Mm -hmm. How did it develop? How have I carried through my life with this thought yeah. to arrive at the problem that I'm at? And especially with money, if you if you feel like you're not making progress in your financial life or your work life, it could be some of this money script that you have going on right. that needs to be uncovered. Well, and I think it's so important that even if, you know, your family went through poverty mm -hmm. or went through a period of time where dad didn't have a job, those are memories that ha stay with you. Yeah. You know, because they also triggered certain emotions during those times. And, um, and when an event has a lot of emotion um, tied to it, neuroscience has showed that it, that memory is stamped in our, our right. just stamped in our brains. Right. And so then how does that overall impact your decision making mm -hmm. as an adult. That's right. You know, and then it's also so important to think about how those decisions and behaviors that you've you've carried through, those thinking patterns that you've carried through, how do you pass them on and how do they affect your children? Mm -hmm. So I'm so happy that Rhonda has joined us today mm -hmm. so we could talk about financial scripts and, and how to to deal with children and teaching children financial scripts and industriousness. And it's so important in today's culture that our children learn how to, to manage money properly for themselves and really make their money learn to work for them and not be hostage or bound by their own financial limitations. Um, because it's, it's a difficult economy and a difficult environment that, that we live in. Rhonda and I are actually going to do another show on boomerang kids, mm -hmm. which are um, individuals who have left college now and can't find a job and it had the financial right. impact of that. So it's so important that we teach children along the way the values mm -hmm. of, of money. Well, in closing today, I would like to invite you to visit our website at www.insight counseling services PC or our Facebook page where you can submit topics you would like to see discussed or questions that you would like to see addressed. I'd like to thank you for joining us today and I look forward to seeing you next time. Until then, live well.